Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. I'm Xavier Beal, Vice President of Human Resources and Trades, and it is my pleasure to welcome you as we celebrate our Prentice School's 103rd graduating class. All right, let's make some more noise for the, the 103rd graduating class. That's right, we're shipbuilders. I'd like to take a moment also to introduce people sharing the stage with me this morning. I'm joined by Dr. Leticia McCain, Director of Education at New Purdue Shipbuilding's Apprentice School. And beside her are three, that's right, you can give it up for Dr. McCain. <laughs> and beside her are three, three Apprentice School graduates and members of our senior staff. Gary Fuller, Vice President of Fleet Support Programs, Damon Satry, Vice President of Integrated Planning and Production Control, and Dave Horn, Senior Director of Trades. Also with us on the stage is our President, Jennifer Boykin. And, and today's commencement speaker, the Honorable Governor Glenn Youngkin. The governor has graciously taken time out of his busy schedule to celebrate with us and share words of wisdom with our graduates. Here, he's a true advocate of the Apprentice School and we appreciate his presence here today. I went there because I wanted to keep going to give you guys an opportunity to really welcome the governor to our Apprentice School graduation. <laughs> governor, we truly appreciate you being here with us. I'm also pleased to welcome two members of the governor's cabinet that's with us this morning, the Honorable Martin, Martin Brown and the Honorable Brian Slater. <clears throat> We are also honored to have with us other state and local leaders, including members of our General Assembly, heads of state agencies, Newport News Mayor Philip Jones, members of city council, and representatives from our school systems, colleges, and universities. You may have also recognized several Newport News shipbuilding leaders here this morning. They're here to support our shipbuilders, our apprentice graduates, and they're gonna be here with you throughout this program. Thank you all, thank everyone for being here this morning. In just a moment, we will begin the processional. But first, I want to remind you that we are here today for one reason, one special reason alone, to celebrate our graduates. This means, this means that throughout the ceremony, feel free to applaud, feel free to cheer, feel free to make some noise. Yeah, let's get it started. This, this, this isn't a stuffy graduation. This is a tribute to our apprentice our apprentice grads, our shipbuilders. So let me tell you a little bit about what's gonna happen. The processional graduates will be led by this year's Frank F. Satchel Jr. Outstanding Faculty Award recipient, Randy Boone. <laughs> once, once the graduates are in place, the national anthem will be sung by David Wesley, a member of the graduating class. Then Rosa Rainey, another proud graduate and recipient of James P. Healy Communication Community Service Award will be here. Looks like Rosa, David, and Randy definitely have a support group here this morning. Now I invite everyone to please stand for the processional and remain standing for the national anthem.
yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Well, first off, all glory be to God. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, David, for sharing your voice with us today. Let us pray. God, almighty creator of the universe, we thank you for this amazing celebration and we welcome your presence in this place. We come before you today thanking you for all that you have given us, including the many blessings and opportunities we have been granted in our lives. We ask for your guidance and strength as we celebrate the accomplishments of the 103rd graduating class of the Apprentice School. Creator, we also thank you for the commitment and dedication instilled in each and every one of these graduates. Thank you for our families, friends, and coworkers who have been there throughout our journey, extending support when we needed it and bearing witness to our growth. God, please continue to motivate and be with each of us, keeping us safe as we continue to contribute to the legends and legacies we build at Newport New Shipbuilding. As shipbuilders, it is your will that we humbly construct quality ships for the brave Navy sailors of our nation. As we continue with our careers, please provide a blanket of encouragement for each of us as we apply the craft skills, academic skills, and leadership skills we have obtained. May we always remember that you granted us the strength and courage to overcome any obstacle in the way of this finish line. Let this place be full of the love and compassion we should show one another, regardless of differences. We pray this, trusting and believing in you. Amen. Amen. Everyone, please be seated. Can I just say that our shipbuilders are talented? And this is an indication of that. Great job, great job. Thank you, David and Rosa, for starting our ceremony off with the pomp and circumstance it deserves. I'd also like to thank Liberty Live Church for allowing us to host our ceremony in this magnificent facility. We are here this morning as family, friends, mentors, and loved ones of the graduating class, united in our pride for these men and women who go above and beyond to support our nation. Graduates, I'd like to congratulate you on your achievements. You chose to answer the noble call to become a shipbuilder, to give of yourself to build the world's most powerful nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and submarines. You completed thousands of hours of rigorous classroom and on-the-job training to become experts in your field. And now you graduate today, armed with the craftsmanship, scholarship, and leadership necessary to become our next generation of great shipbuilding leaders. 
Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. What you accomplish is truly remarkable, and it's just the beginning. As you may know, I began my shipbuilding career on the waterfront, as did many of the senior leaders to my right. When I walked through the shipyard gates on my first day as a pipe fitter, I had no clue that I would be here speaking to you today. But what I did know is that I was taking the first step on an exciting journey. There's magic in shipbuilding. We get the incredible opportunity to design something massive and watch it come to life before our eyes, turning digital drawings into steel giants. I'm a second generation shipbuilder, and my father still works as a welder with the company today. So I've heard the stories about the shipyard of yesteryear. And while the magic is the same, our tools are very different. We get the opportunity to use visual work instructions, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, and more, all to enhance the safety and efficiency of our workforce and our products. Yet, as innovative as these tools are, the real magic, the real magic is accomplished by you. You help build the most powerful platforms on Earth. Think about it. Not many people can say that they build nuclear-powered ships for our U.S. Navy. So take pride in it. Not only are you making a difference for our nation's defense, you are also perfecting your craft through education and continuous improvement. As I'm sure my colleagues will agree, your experience at the Apprentice School has made you an invaluable leader for our country's fu company's future. Your apprenticeship gave you the opportunity to experience different trades and work in different capacities across the shipyard. You've supported new construction and overhaul and become assets um, in cost estimation, production planning, and more. These experiences allowed you to make connections and better understand our business. So no matter where your career takes you, you will be an informed decision maker and a strong leader. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be on this stage as a vice president. Newport News shipbuilding is busier than it's been in decades, with our peers and dry docks full. So we're looking to you for motivation and innovation, and for new ways to accomplish our work and our mission. The ships we build serve as a workplace, a home, and a shield for our Navy sailors, so we can never let our standards falter. Shipbuilding is truly a calling, and I hope you continue to answer that call each and every day. Thank you. Shipbuilding is special. Now I'd like to take a few moments to recognize graduates who have not only answered the noble call, but also proven to be standouts in their class. Each year, the Apprentice School awards graduates who go above and beyond in academics, craftsmanship, volunteering, and more. The awards are named for previous Apprentice School leaders. And in fact, James Healy, who inspired the James P. Healy Community Service Award, is with us today. Thank you for being here, Jim. In true shipyard spirit, we prepare a special video to celebrate our honorees. So let's roll the video. William Charles Graves, Shane Michael Irving, Justin Lane Lund, Carl Thomas Stolte. The Charles F. Bailey Award, presented to graduates who attained the highest scholastic average in required courses. This year's recipients are Patrick Joseph Flory, Chandler Paul Fowler, Aaron Michelle Mosley, Craig Michael Pace, Michael Monoloto Saliza, Jasmine Renee Tutt. The W.R. Phillips Jr. Award. 
presented to graduates from the advanced salary programs who excelled in craftsmanship and job performance. This year's recipients are Jordan Tyler Allen, Joseph Spencer Randolph III, Jasmine Renee Tutt, The G. Guy Via Award, presented to graduates who attained the highest scholastic average in each of the optional advanced academic programs leading to degrees in engineering, engineering technology, and business administration. This year's recipients are Jacob Robert Blanton, Andrew Kimber Fournier, Jordan Alexander Lopez, Jasmine Renee Tutt, Zachary Cole Webb, The Gold Athletic Award, presented to graduates who lettered each year of their apprenticeship in the same sport or activity while demonstrating leadership in the classroom. Maxwell Strom Burcham, Andrew Trawick Castine, Derek K. Dabbs Jr., Jacob Edward Day, Vershawn Lamar Ely Jr., William Charles Graves, William Lee Heath, Braden Cole Lambert, Joseph Raymond Mamano, Paul Eugene Massey Jr., Caleb Anthony Molesky, Marion Cortez Moore, Aaron Michelle Mosley, Jeremy Lee Mosley, Charles Nicholas Pierce, John Russell Pierce, Hunter Lee Riss, Leslie Holden Sandridge, Luke Aaron Shanback, Christian Alexander Walker, Javon Tyrone Walker, Lucas Heath Wells. The James P. Healy Community Service Award, presented to the graduate who most exemplified leadership in community service. This year's winner is Rosa Elizabeth Rainey. The Frank F. Satchel Jr. Outstanding Faculty Award. Presented to a faculty member nominated by the graduating class who demonstrates the highest level of instructional quality and concern for apprentice success and for overall contributions and support of the school. This year's winner is Randy Darnell Boone Jr. The Homer L. Ferguson Award, presented on behalf of the Apprentice Alumni Association to the graduate who achieved the highest average in combined, required academic and craft grades. This year's winner is Jasmine Renee Tutt. Congratulations to the Apprentice School Class of 2022 Graduate and Faculty Award recipients. Congratulations to all award winners. Let's give them another round of applause. I'm now pleased to welcome our president. Her presence here today demonstrates just how important you are and how special this ceremony is. Please give a warm welcome for Jennifer Boykin. Good morning. Thank you, Xavier, uh, for that kind introduction, and you are absolutely right. It is an honor and privilege to be here with you all to celebrate today. And let me just say, I am so proud of all of you. Congratulations. Today's graduation is truly a special day for our company, and I am honored to be here. Graduates, we come here together this morning for a well-deserved celebration. You dedicated countless hours to academic coursework and on-the-job training, shouldering the work of being both a full-time employee and a full-time student. And that's a lot to balance, especially when you add in their work-life family requirements, 
community service, that sports, activities, and everything else you do. It's so much to balance. It's so impressive. Yet you managed it all, and today we're here to celebrate your accomplishments and allow you to celebrate and enjoy time uh, in this with your friends and family. And I hope you savor this moment because really Monday's right around the corner and we'll all be right back at it. So <laughs> let's enjoy it this weekend. Like Xavier mentioned, we do have an unprecedented workload. And so there's never been a time when the company or I personally as the, the leader representing this awesome company depend on each of you and on all of your leadership. Let the challenges of being a world-class shipbuilder inspire you to always be on the lookout for new innovations. As leaders, help others around you embrace the company values and uphold the importance of safety and our nuclear standards. And finally, keep learning. That's another piece of shipbuilding magic. Xavier mentioned some shipbuilding magic earlier, but that's another piece. There's always something new to learn. And I recognize that this can feel like a tall order, but I want each of you to remember that the Navy entrusts its, mo its most important work to us for a reason. Never forget that. Congratulations again, and thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're going to do in your future as you lead Newport News Shipbuilding. Our future is so bright with you in it. Thank you. Today's keynote speaker is a proud advocate for organizations like the Apprentice School. After a successful career in finance, he retired and founded Virginia Ready, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping underemployed Virginians gave, gain training in high demand careers. As our governor, he supports the Go Virginia Innovative Workforce Pathways Program designed to encourage internships and on-the-job training. I had the, measure, uh, the pleasure of meeting with him recently and, and had a chance to talk about Newport News Shipbuilding, our workforce development efforts in this apprentice school. And we were very proud to host the first lady here at the apprentice school last fall. In both instances, their passion for helping Virginia and Virginians shines through. And it is this passion that has fueled the governor's service throughout Virginia. He is an advocate, he is a leader, and he is a proud product of Hampton Roads. Please give a warm shipyard welcome to the Vir governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin. Well, first of all, congratulations, graduates. That's what this morning is all about. <laughs> President Boykin, thank you for those very kind words. And I am so excited to be part of today's ceremony. I want to thank the Shipbuilding Apprentice School staff, faculty. I want to thank families and friends and guests who are here celebrating this extraordinarily important and monumental moment in our graduates' lives. I also want to recognize the fact that these graduates have not just worked hard, but they've sacrificed. And I want to thank all of you for prioritizing the future of Newport News Shipbuilding and putting it at the forefront of your career. We have among us today 200 elite graduates of the nation's preeminent apprentice, apprenticeship school. 200. And this is an extraordinary group. We've already just heard many, many, many of the amazing awards that they have received. But I just want to be clear that we've got 32 graduates who've completed the optional advanced programs and the 79 graduates who've earned honors two graduates who've completed the Advanced Shipyard Operational Program, 43 graduates have completed the Frontline FAST Program, 33 graduates were inducted 
than to the National Society of Leadership Success. Six graduates completed the world-class shipbuild, shipbuilder curriculum. Six graduates who are military veterans are currently serving in the armed services as reservists or guardsmen. 22 graduates who earned the gold athletic award. And we have among us four sets of brothers. This is an amazing group. We also have among us exceptional athletes who helped the Builders win the first ever National Club Football Association Championship. And last year's United States Collegiate Athletic Association Baseball Championship. How about this? We have pipe fitters, coding specialists, electricians, engineers. We have welders, designers, cost estimators, and so much more. You all are shipbuilders. It's an extraordinary statement. And I know each of you has an incredible story. I was struck by the story of Edwin Morales, mechanical engineer who grew up about 30 minutes from Newport News Shipbuilders, Shipbuilding's sister shipyard in Mississippi, where his father worked. Irwin worked at a subway, a subway sandwich shop. And one day, an Ingalls Shipbuilding customer came in and suggested that he apply for an apprenticeship. Erwin, I know you joke today that you're still working on subs. <laughs> but subs on a much larger scale that are a lot bigger than a six-foot party sub. <laughs> it must have been destiny. Because the Virginia-class submarine where Erwin has, in fact, worked today is the best in the nuclear-powered submarine fleet. Well done, Earl. Congratulations. With us, we also have Rosie Rainey, who you heard provide just an amazing invocation today. There you go. <laughs> Rose is a skilled craft instructor and coding specialist foreman. She grew up attending and helping with builder football games because her mom served on the school's athletic staff. There you go. <laughs> but it wasn't that connection but rather her service in the United States Navy and her love for math that led her to enroll in the apprenticeship program. She's volunteered at every single graduation since then while also volunteering and inspiring high school students to pursue careers in shipbuilding. That's intergenerational bridge building. And on top of that, Rosa is a proud mom of four, and those are your kids. Rose, I want to thank you for your leadership. So it was not long ago on a campaign trail that I stood outside of the Newport News shipbuilding gates at 5 o'clock in the morning on a warm summer day and shook hands of so many, so many coming out and so many going in, going into the birthplace of the nation's greatest ships. How honored I am to be with you today. For all of you, what it took to arrive here at this very moment isn't fully understood by all. Four, five, eight-year apprenticeships. And just like President Boykin said, you have put in thousands of hours in skill building and classroom learning. Collectively amongst the 200 of you, 
It's two to three hundred, if not more, thousand hours of work and effort. And all of that is on top of a full-time job, pursuing additional degrees, volunteering in your communities, being a dedicated parent, sister, brother, child. It's extraordinary. You've worked on everything from fast attack submarines to the largest warships ever built. I know you've worked hard. It's not easy laying down a perfect bead one minute and then studying for an exam the next. You've learned how to think and solve immensely complicated problems. And every day, you make critical decisions. I know you've faced trials that have tested you, hard moments, and I'm sure setbacks along the way. Yet you've persisted, honed your skills, and kept your eye on the prize. You build America's Navy, and you are the backbone of our American military. The shipyard is truly a national wonder. Supplying the Navy with our finest ships and carriers and submarines. And as governor, I am not just humbled, I am proud to say the road to America's exceptionalism runs right through your classrooms and dry docks because of you. That's what we know. <clears throat> I'm also proud to say that we have something in common. You see, in 2021, I was elected the 74th governor of this great commonwealth of Virginia. And that same year, you started the overhaul of the USS John Stennis CVN 74. We'll both be sailing out of port, sort of, in 2025, literally as I wrap up my time as governor at the beginning of 2026, and that ship heads out for sea. Now, I know there's a rule that you should never talk policy in a commencement speech, but I want to say this, that my administration cherishes this school. We cherish it because of you. You harness the power of a unique and valued skill set honed through years of training, coaching, and instruction, and doing. In fact, we need more of you. We need more apprenticeship schools, more apprenticeships that start during high school. We want more credentials being earned and more students graduating ready to start an extraordinary career, including in shipbuilding. Shipbuilding and the skilled trades are an enormous part of our commonwealth and our country's future, just as they were a foundation of our past. After all, it was many, many years ago in England that a skilled shipbuilder working with a dedicated apprentice, they built great ships. Three of those ships eventually brought life to Jamestown and set our nation on a path forward to its founding. And likewise, what you have done and what you will continue to do is chart the course of history through your craftsmanship. The Dorothy Tugboat, built in 1890, sits right outside your school as a testament to superb, superb shipbuilding. And the USS Enterprise, CVN 65, commissioned in 1961, was the very first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. It traveled the world and participated in both the Cuban Missile Crisis blockade and missions in the Gulf of Tonkin. Pivotal moments in meeting foreign threats and protecting our national security. Last year, you celebrated two important milestones, the keel laying of the new enterprise 
and of the Arkansas submarine. And now as projects sit in various phases of construction throughout the storied shipyard, you can look forward to years ahead when these are delivered to the Navy in support of critical missions, knowing that you were here when they were built. Like the keel is the backbone of any ship, you are the keel of the future. You are playing a vital role in America's future because of your skills, your unparalleled craftsmanship, and your leadership. In fact, it says it on a poster right outside on your way to the bus station on Washington Avenue. And you have all seen this. The mission starts with us. Thank you for answering the call to serve our nation as only shipbuilders can. As you put on your lanyards every day and you walk through the gates and down those stairs that I saw so many go down and come up from, please know the mission starts with you. The mission to build ships. The mission to build warfighting ships, carriers and submarines. The mission to dominate air and sea. To strike fear and yes, awe in the hearts of our enemies and to defend our sacred shores from those who wish to do us harm. You are truly the pride of Virginia, the power of Virginia, and the future of Virginia. You're no longer apprentices, you are masters of your trades, leaders of your generation, and above all, builders of our precious freedom. If I could leave you with one piece of advice, it would start with the observation that your graduation has a lot in common with a boat and its mooring. Two things at once, holding fast and ready to go, an anchor and a journey ahead. You all are an intergenerational interlocking you're the next link in a chain. And as you graduate, I urge you to carry that duty and honor and fate forward with pride. Your accomplishments are just the beginning of an important journey ahead to, yes, protect our nation, but also to inspire the next generation. I want to thank you all for allowing me to be part of this incredible ceremony today. And as you all will continue your careers, I know you will remember this important milestone. And so today, yes, celebrate, spend time with friends and family, and maybe even get a Subway sandwich. <laughs> as seafarers say, fair winds, and following seas. And may our almighty God bless you and keep you and watch over you, class of 2022. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor Youngkin. <clears throat> we are so honored to celebrate our graduates with you today as they continue to support our great nation. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, our graduates will walk across the stage and ring the apprentice school bell. And as many, as many of you all out there know, when they walk across this stage and ring that bell, that is a true rite of passage. To lead us through this effort, I'd like to turn the program over to Dr. Letitia McCain, the Apprentice School's Director of Education. Dr. McCain. Thank you, Vice President Beal. Graduates, before I award your certificates, 
Please give your faculty and staff a round of applause for their commitment to training and academic excellence. Graduates, please stand. Let's give them a round of applause. You may be seated. As you stand row by row, turn your tassels from right to left to signify the completion of your apprenticeship. We will call the class in alphabetical order. So will the first row please stand. Michael Alejandro with honors. Jordan Tyler Allen with high honors. Carrie Michelle Ammons. Devante Lester Arrington. Ronald Daquan Austin. Tyler Patrick Bakers with honors. Zachary Tyler Betts with honors. Jacob Robert Blanton with high honors. Noah Jeremy Bondurant. James Peter Banu with honors. Farah Marie Bosica. Nathaniel Reed Britt with honors. Kalia Damone Brown. Maxwell Strom Burcham. Miles Richardson Campbell with high honors. Jacob Philip Cannon. James Francis Carlton. Andrew Trawick Castine with honors. Raymond Bruce Charnock with high honors. Justin McCauley Cobb. Philip Thomas Corson with honors. Michael Darwood Creel. Yaquan Malik Cruz. Nicholas Ryan Crowder with honors. Derek K. Dabbs Jr. Makai Raytheon Davis. Jacob Andrew Day. Shane Thomas DeFoseca with honors. John Knox Didick. Mark Aaron Santos Dizon. Eugenia Chartrell Duncan. Dalton Luke Durant with high honors. 
Vershawn Lamar Ely Jr. Aaron James Elliott with honors. David Lee Emery III. John Andrew Emery Jr. with honors. William Christopher Evans. John Leslie Forbes Jr. Rebecca Lorraine Ford with honors. Christy Lyle Friends. Timothy Nathaniel Garris with honors. Zachary Thomas Golson. Cole Thomas Gilbert. Scott Anthony Glinsky. William Charles Graves. David Wayne Grimm, Jr. Sean Gregory Guzman with honors. Tiffany Michelle Harper. Tiffany Michelle Harvey. <laughs> William Lee Heath with honors. Nathaniel Kenneth Henry with honors. Wyatt James Hogan. Dalia Denise Holloman. Philip Bryant Howard Jr. The Sean Victay James with honors. Andrew Lee Jarvis. Abigail Rebecca Johnson with high honors. Mariah Arnett Johnson. McKinley Edward Johnson. Simon, Simon Tyler Johnson with honors. Brittany Lachey Jones. Dalen Dion Jones. Garrett Allen Jordan. Corey Trayvon Joyner. Jarrett Richard Stevens Jystead with honors. Christian Michael Kameshki. Austin James Kennedy. Austin James Kiefner. Carson Dane King. Evan Michael Cozen. Nicholas Patrick Kurtz. Braden Cole Lambert. Jessica Sydney Jade Lawson. Joshua Ryan Letta with honors. Jonathan Peter Light. Nicholas Michael Loftus with honors. Jordan Alexander Lopez with high honors. Robert Preston Lowe with honors. 
Justin Lane Lund with honors. Sarah Virginia Mockamer. Vincent Paul Megamedov with honors. Joseph Raymond Mamano. Paul Eugene Massey Jr. with honors. Benjamin Joseph Matranga. William Scott Matthews with honors. Derek Ryan May. Laurie Elizabeth McDade. Keon Antonio McDowell. Eric William McNally with honors. Charles Lawrence Meadows with honors. Mitchell Quinn Mydale. Caleb Anthony Molesky. Michael Keith Miller with honors. Sean Kyle Miller with honors. Joseph Michael Mitchell with honors. Laron Deshaun Mitchell. Megan Catherine Moore with honors. Erin Real Morales with honors. Erin Michelle Mosley with high honors. Jeremy Lee Mosley with honors. Cody Taylor Norris. Skyler David Aller. Craig Michael Pace with honors. Jonathan Patlin. Bruce Gilbert Pauls Jr. Jacob Robert Pepper. Charles Nicholas Pierce with high honors. John Russell Pierce. Rosa Elizabeth Rainey. Joseph Spencer Randolph III with high honors. Nicholas J. Reposa with honors. Hunter Lee Riss. Joshua Devlin Ryan. Denise Ann Sampson. <laughs> Leslie Holden Sandrich. <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Roland Martin Sounders III. Island Hope Sister. Calicia Javel Smith. Dorian Joseph Smith with honors. Alaya Cherise Stapleton with honors. Oh, 
Carl Thomas Stolte with high honors. Robert Levi Straitiff. Hayden James Sweeney. Trench, Trent Frederick Teets. Marvin Simmons Thompson Jr. with honors. Jeremy Luis Torres. Abimiel Torres Pinero. Jasmine Renee Tut with highest honors. Carlos Anthony Velez III. Brian Alexander Waddles with high honors. Christian Alexander Walker. Javon Tyrone Walker. Cordell Xavier Walker with honors. Kiaren Granville Watford. Tabitha Patrice Watson. Anthony Christian Waterton. Zachary Cole Webb with high honors. John Russell Welch. Zachary Ryan Welch. David, David Elijah Wesley. James Rudolph West III. Ross Dasett Whitlock Jr. with honors. Mylon Lee Willis. Ian, Ian Jerron Winfield. Ian James Winslow. Rachel Rainey Witt with honors. Amy Folks Woodard. Tyler Colson Wooten. DeAndre Devon Yearby. Our last graduate. Let's give all of our graduates a round of applause. Congratulations, class of 2022. Go forward and be great. I will now turn it back over to Xavier Beal. Well great job. Great job. So, so before we move on, I'd like to really thank Dr. McCain for her leadership of their apprentice school each day. And please give her a round of applause. Before we end today's ceremony, it is tradition to invite the Homer L. Ferguson Award recipient to address the graduates. This award is presented to the apprentice with the highest average and combined required academic and craft grades. 
And given it's Women's History Month, it's only fitting that this year's honoree is making her own history as the first African-American woman and the second, yes. But wait, there's more. <laughs> and the second woman in the school's history to receive this award. Please join me in welcoming the class of 2022 Homer L. Ferguson recipient, Jasmine Tut. Started quite the day. To my fellow graduates, look at us. We did it. Today, we celebrate the completion of our apprenticeships, appreciate each other's successes, show gratitude to all those who supported us, and prepare for the next step of our careers. I'm definitely looking forward to the celebration part, but before we go party it up, I ask for just a minute of reflection. I think it's important, especially now, to be mindful of where our journey began, the experiences that shaped us along the way, and our path forward. I'll never forget my very first tour of the shipyard. I rode in a van with other prospective apprentices, while one of my future craft instructors guided us around. I remember feeling way out of my league in awe of all the huge chunks of rusted metal staged in different laydown areas and the massive ship outlines along the piers. As we drove by various shipyard landmarks, our guide paused to point out a shipbuilder moving along the painted walkways beside the road. Now, there's no running in the shipyard, but this particular gentleman was moving with the purpose and hustle of a professional speedwalker. That's a shipbuilder who's on his way to a job. We want to see that kind of fire in our apprentices, he commented. If I had felt out of my league before, I was definitely intimidated in that moment. How can I do that, I thought. I don't even know where I'm going. All I could think of were the concerns I had about how I would survive in a tough shipyard environment. What had I gotten myself into? Those fears reverberated in me as I had to navigate an aircraft carrier for the first time by myself to report to my work area on my first day. They echoed again the first time I held a grinder in my hand and shot a stud into a bulkhead. For those of you who remember your first few days and weeks in the shipyard or remember experiencing doubts and fears, I was right there with you. What helped me get through though was the continued support and encouragement from my friends, family, and fellow apprentices. Those experiences and your learning, your journey, doesn't just end once the apprenticeship does. Leave today set on sharing those experiences with others because we're stronger together than we are alone. Don't forget those feelings as you help guide the next generation of apprentices and shipbuilders because we'll leave today as new members of a unique community of graduates unlike any other. And within this community exists a bond of hard work, dedication, and sheer grit that's unique to having been an apprentice. Surviving through the apprenticeship is no small feat, and I hope each of you feels the same pride that I have in saying that we made it. Through rain, snow, blistering summers, and black, fact, black flag days on the shop or on the ship, endless classes and piles of homework, we did it. Even through a pandemic, we did it. Each and every one of us knows, without a shred of doubt, that being an apprentice was never an entitlement, and it was never given to us. It was earned. I'm so proud of the class of 2022. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Jasmine another round of applause. And Jasmine, thank you for reminding every shipbuilder in here of what it felt like on that first day, but how your brothers and sisters in shipbuilding can help you get through any day that we have as shipbuilders. And as those vessels that we build leave our company, we can collectively say, yes, we did it. So before we close, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the support system that helped our graduates. The parents, grandparents, spouses, significant others, and children of our graduating class. Your love has helped shape the future of these leaders. So will you please stand to be recognized? All right, we can do better than that for the support system. Thank you. Graduates, again, congratulations on this incredible achievement. Your role in our company and in the defense of our nation cannot be understated. Thank you for your dedication and grit, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. I now ask everyone to please stand and remain standing for the faculty and graduates recessional. Once the graduates have actually left the sanctuary, you're welcome to join us in the dining hall for light refreshments. Thank you, stay safe, and please enjoy the remainder of your day. <laughs>